Rising, the Mysterious, the Tom Brown Tracker. Okay guys, today I'm coming at you with something a little bit different, and that is going to be looking at a, a knife that really is more like a tool, the Tom Brown Tracker by Topps Knives. Okay guys, so we're going to start this off with my first impressions of the Tom Brown Tracker. So this is the knife. Now of course this is the full-sized TB Tracker and I've been, this knife has been eluding me for quite some time. I've been on the fence about this knife for a while because I wasn't really sure I would like it and I'm honestly not really sure how to feel about it from a knife perspective. And when I actually just decided to pull the trigger, that became more apparent to me that I'm not really sure how to feel about this knife as far as a knife goes. Because honestly, this knife isn't really a knife in the tra traditional sense of what we think a knife is. And therefore, this falls into a legal idea or name of a knife, but this ends up being more like a knife in the idea that it's like a charge, Leatherman charge. This, by legal definition, is a knife, but it's more of a multi-tool. And I think that the tracker is very similar in the way that it's a tool more than it is a knife. However, that's what we're really here to discuss, is its effectiveness as a survival tool, not so much a survival knife. So, like I said, I see this more as a tool than a knife. So, I have to say, when I initially got this thing, I had almost immediate buyer's remorse because I was like, Matthew, what the hell have you got? You know, what have you gotten yourself into? However, I am happy to say that I've kept an open mind about this knife throughout the entire, at least first impressions process and tried to see how it would perform. And I am glad to say that as far as a one tool option, a survival tool option, this knife actually performs significantly better than you would think. Now a lot of people might now a lot of people might give this thing hell for having some chintzy features like say the saw on the back of the uh, spine. However, I have to say, and as I'm rolling into the footage, it does an actually pretty good job. And this is primarily attributed to the fact that Tops, as you guys can see, has, has cut each of these teeth at a different angle so that it acts more like a chainsaw blade uh, or the chainsaw tips or edges on a chainsaw when they do the cutting. There are different sets. Uh, the, each teeth, each tooth, I should say, is at a different set angle and that helps cut. And while I don't expect to fell a tree with the, the saw back, doing basic things such as cutting notches to help build uh, and construct shelters, this thing actually does a pretty good job at. The next notable feature for the uh, TOPS tracker that, like I said, this is my being my first impressions, I don't have in-depth experience, which is what we will be gaining in a little bit, but the uh, saw, or not the saw, but the actual axe action or motion of being choked back like this and using this forward edge does a pretty good job at chopping. And that's because not only is the knife's blade uh, weight primarily shifted toward the front of the blade, but it also has a really comfortable uh, way of choking back on the blade. So I like that part. And then lastly, the other part that I tested and was so far impressed with is the actual back edge for doing some finer and more delicate tasks. Now, one thing I dislike about the knife is, well, there's a few things so far that I wish it had a little bit better ergonomics for the finer, the back part of this blade, the finer part of the blade, I wish was just a little bit better refined. I wish you could choke up on the blade as well, I also wish that there was a better way to strike a ferro rod off of this thing, which we'll get to. And I wanted to save the uh, mods portion of this until after I had given my first impressions on this knife because I didn't want to have already modded it. But I am actually going to take the Dremel to a little bit of this back here and just take off the coating so I can actually strike it with a ferro rod because the actual back right here is not a half bad place to strike a ferro rod. I just have to remove the coating. 
So anyways, guys, that is my first impressions. This knife, or this tool, rather, is actually pretty capable, pretty confident, and overall, I'm very much excited to actually get more use on this tool, more time using it, more time thrashing on it, because one thing I will give it credit is it's very, very robustly built, and that always equals one heck of a fun time just beating the crap out of this knife and seeing what it's made out of, seeing what it can take, and ultimately seeing what it can produce. So that's what it got me, that's what's got me really excited about this survival tool, the Tom Brown Tracker, and honestly, it's been one of those tools that I've wanted to take a deeper, closer, in-depth look for myself, because everyone that talks about this thing on YouTube you know, they say yay or nay about it, but this is one of those types of tools is just so unique, it's so weird that you really have to use it for yourself to actually know if it's gonna work for you. And I think it's a lot like the uh, Tahoma field knife where, you know, you gotta get it out, you gotta use it and see if it works for you. And sadly, the Tahoma field knife didn't work for me, but as I'm using this knife, the Tom Brown Tracker more and more, it's shaping up to be more like a knife that actually might work for me. As far as just having a really robust, really rugged built knife, that's just a pure survival machine that if you only have just this thing for survival, you might not be half bad.